Dakota News Now begins with an alert from the First Alert Weather Center. There are closures all over South Dakota at this hour as we track this winter storm. Not only roads and interstates, but also schools and businesses. We have those rolling along the bottom of your screen. It is 9 o'clock, and good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Allen. I'm Andrea Anderson. We are looking at blizzards and winter weather warnings for most of South Dakota. Yeah, these warnings stretch into southwestern Minnesota as well. When the last round of snow comes to an end, some places could see over a foot of snow. We've been tracking this for a couple of days now, and now it's coming to fruition. Tyler Roney, hello there. Hey there, Brian and Andrea. You know, we have been looking at that snowfall pretty much on and off again throughout much of the day thus far. And we're just kind of in the beginning stages of this winter storm because there's still going to be plenty of snowfall on the way tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. First alert live Doppler radar, your eyes are kind of drawn to the Sioux Falls area where we've had some kind of light to at times moderate snowfall taking place and that's extending toward the Worthington area and as far north as places like Pipestone and Madison as well as west toward Mitchell. Now this is beginning to fill in a little bit too as you look off to the south and west of Sioux Falls you know, you're thinking, oh, we'll get uh, some clearing, but it is looking like we're going to keep building in some more of that snowfall. Further northeast, that snow, again, sticking around northeastern South Dakota, as well as around Pier and points off to the west, although kind of thinning out temporarily before the next round begins for tomorrow. Much colder air settling in, temperatures in the single digits. Some of us in the teens, Yankton, one of the only warmer spots at 25 degrees. And the wind has been pretty steady all day between 15 and 25 miles an hour. That's why we have winter weather advisories in place and winter storm warnings as well through Wednesday morning. But then after that, everything pretty much becomes blizzard warnings nearly across the entire Dakota News Now coverage area. That is the next big thing as we continue to track this winter storm moving on through. You'll notice right along in south of Interstate 90, that's where we're going to be looking at that light snow pretty much all night tonight before the heavier snow starts to arrive throughout the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. So a very prolonged event with this winter storm moving on through. We'll kind of time everything out and let you know how much snowfall is on the way when it's finally all said and done in just a few minutes, Brian. Tyler, thank you. As with any amount of measurable snow, it means street crews in Sioux Falls are getting ready to tackle whatever is in front of them. But unlike the last major snowstorm, crews will not only be battling the snowy roads, the wind is going to play a major factor as well. Uh, it's going to impact it. Obviously, we, you know, we've already impacted it quite a bit. Um, as we mentioned last week, we're about 50% uh, through our winter budget. Um, and so this will greatly impact it if we get the amounts of snow they're predicting. Now, Hansen says the emergency snow routes will be plowed until the snow stops. As far as the budget the crew gets for the year, as you heard, Hansen says they've used at least 50% of it, and that was before dealing with this round of stormy weather. Between the heavy snowfall and strong winds at times, Department of Public Safety staff warning drivers that conditions could become life-threatening at times, especially if this storm is anything like our last two systems to move through late last year. Portions of Interstate 90 and I-29 expected to close later this evening. Officials already urging people to stay home and off the roads as much as possible over the next few days. You at Public Safety are to make sure that not only our Highway Patrol, but our Office of Emergency Management is reaching out to our local partners, which would include the local police chiefs, sheriffs, emergency management teams, tribes, to make sure that everybody's at least aware of, you know, what's going to potentially come in the next couple days with the storm. And then it's also important to have those conversations about preparation and, and making sure that if needs come up during the storm, we're there to help them. And for those who have to travel, officials say it is important to drive at safe speeds, which are usually no lo slower than normal conditions, and make sure your vehicle is equipped with a winter survival kit. And a reminder, you can stay ahead of this storm and every storm by downloading our Dakota News Now and First Alert Weather apps. Also, be sure to follow our social media pages and get instant updates over at dakotanewsnow.com. Well, another round of significant snowfall is on the way for much of us. It's going to cause dangerous situations for not only drivers, but also for those without a home or warm clothing. Bailey Peterson spoke to a nonprofit in Sioux Falls working to keep people safe as another winter storm moves in. Bailey. Brian, with severe winter weather moving in, Union Gospel Mission is providing resources for people to stay warm. This comes after Union Gospel Mission experienced heavy flooding from the last large winter storm. Since then, they have been working to clean and rebuild much of the damage that was done as a result of the flood. 
the damage that we had was very significant. Um, we had about 13 dumpsters we had to get rid of office supplies and mattresses and pillows and blankets. Despite the challenges, Union Gospel Mission Communications and Marketing Director Ellie Heckel says the mission is making sure to serve the large need during events like this. Because of the weather, we see a huge influx of people coming in just to get a blanket, just to get a coat, just to get boots or, or things that they need to wrap themselves around because they're outside, they're walking around. With the weather playing a large role in the reopening of the thrift store that is attached to Union Gospel Mission. We just opened up three days ago and we've already served probably 250 people that need assistance, not to mention the community. Saying how helpful this resource has been for people looking for warm clothing. Our prices are really affordable. Jackets range anywhere from $3 up to 10 and 10 is for our winter jacket. Our scarves, hats, and gloves are only 50 cents. Both were thankful to be able to open in time to help serve those preparing for this next bout of winter weather. The need is great. It's only going to keep getting greater, when, especially when we have the weather turn and have storms coming. Um, we know that we'll see an influx, and we've just been, uh, our staff has been busy all day. For more information on resources provided at Union Gospel Mission, you can go to the story on your Dakota News Now app and follow the links. Brian and Andrea. All right, Bailey, thank you. On to a follow-up tonight. Officials with Hy-Vee speaking out after, after the company suspended its employee discount yesterday. Officials say that suspension came after employees were allegedly abusing the program. At this time, the program is being revamped, and Hy-Vee says they expect to release it again mid-April. Tonight, authorities in Spencer, Iowa are investigating after they say they found a man dead. According to a press release, Spencer police received a 911 call yesterday just before noon about an unresponsive man. When emergency services arrived, they determined the 29-year-old man was deceased. The scene is still under investigation by Spencer police and the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. They're working to determine just how this man died. Well, now may be the ideal time to adopt a pet into your home from the Sioux Falls Area Humane Society because they are reaching capacity. Out of the 80 dog kennels at the facility, only a few are available and many are under construction because of water pipe damage. While animals currently at the shelter are still struggling to find homes, there are more coming into the facility than staff can keep up with. They say they are scheduling surrenders weeks in advance just to ensure there is space. It's not just us that's seeing this. Our local rescue partners are seeing an abundance of animals. They need fosters just as much as we do. So we're looking for our whole community to help all the rescues out. And if you would like to adopt, you can get pre-screened and book an appointment through the Sioux Falls Area Humane Society's website. We have a link to do so on this story at dakotanewsnow.com. A Sioux Falls man who admits to having a problem residence in the past says he has fixed it up, and he's now hoping to spare it from the city's bulldozer on Monday. I-team reporter Beth Warden introduces us to the man and the controversy surrounding the home on South Westfield Trail. Big, nice kid. We have seven kids. Big, nice kitchen. We have a family room here. As a young man growing up in a blue-collar family, Vitaly Straza says he dreamed of a better life. Still a teenager, I would drive this place. I would drive this neighborhood. And I, and I was like, one day. He says hard work in his marketing business allowed him to bankroll the construction of his home. In 2013, we bought two lots. Um, and, and we just wanted to build a dream house. Instead of envisioning moving trucks and placing furniture, Strizo says his dream has turned into a nightmare with plans for the demolition of his house. The city set a date for February 27th to bring an excavator here. There has been a turbulent past with neighbors and the city. Because it was a nuisance at one point in time. It's not right now. It hasn't been for years. We fixed it up. I take full responsibility for it. As a 2016 demolition order by the city moved through the state's court system, improvements began. Despite the demolition order in place, the city of Sioux Falls continued to approve building permit applications for finishing the interior and the exterior of the home in 2017 and 2021. He says the sod is in, the trees planted, and the home has new exterior paint. Then he shows us the progress inside. We need to paint it 
It's all fully drywalled. We need to put the flooring in, put the finishing touches on it, kitchen. He understands the neighbor's frustration in the past with construction debris and being a target for vandals. Our intention was never for this place to be as, you know, an eyesore in the town or, or to cause neighbors uh, frustrations. We, we never intended that at all, not once. Yeah, this will be hardwood going to the kitchen over there. Mm -hmm. yep, all this lower area right here. Now the family of nine hopes to complete the home and move in by the end of the year. I just can't imagine an excavator coming in here and just ruthlessly just tearing this place apart like this on Monday. Past litigation has supported the city in its efforts to demolish the home. Streisaus is trying another attempt to keep his home, filing in federal court. And I don't... I can't even comprehend why can't we finish it now that we have come so far. In Sioux Falls, Beth Warden, Dakota News Now. And we have contacted the city's spokesperson to find out more about their concerns. We also asked how a home with a demolition order could still receive approval for ongoing construction permits. In a response, we were told due to pending litigation, the city of Sioux Falls will not comment. Another pizza hut coming to the east side of Sioux Falls. According to SiouxFalls.Business, that new restaurant will be located at Dolly Farm Village. It will be part of a three-tenant retail building along Veterans Parkway that will include budget blinds. Dolly Farm Village is anticipated to be open a little later this year. Also at Dolly Farm, the theater there held a red carpet event for the world premiere of a Christian film, Jesus Re Revolution. That film scheduled to release this Friday, but those who wanted the opportunity to preview it were able to, thanks to Celebrate Community Church. For me, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I think when you think about the Midwest and then the opportunity to have a film like this come to your city, especially having some of the dignitaries, the talent and the directors, I, I think it's incredible. I think it's a wonderful thing for our city. As mentioned, the film is set to release on Friday. Advanced tickets can be purchased at the Century the East Paul Theater. Was to be here tonight. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Student loan debt may be a red flag for people trying to find their perfect match. We'll take a look at that coming up. Hello there, Tyler. Hey there, Brian. That snowfall still persisting across portions of the area, and we're just going to keep adding on throughout the day tomorrow as that wind begins to ramp up. We'll break down the details coming up in your first alert forecast. Tyler, thank you. Tax time is approaching, and if you are expecting a refund, experts say planning ahead for the cash is key. We have some tips to help you make some smart money moves. Still ahead. And a reminder, Dakota News Now is news when you want it anytime. Download our news app to your smart device, and then you can access the very latest news, breaking news alerts, and live events anytime, even if you're not by your television. This is Dakota News Now at 9 on Fox Sioux Falls. Este eléctrico se siente distinto. Porque su energía viene de la fuente más potente que hay. Tú. Esto es Lexus Electrificado. Inspirado, creado e impulsado por ti. Catch live local streaming TV. Free at viewit.com or on the Viewit app. Stream content from your favorite stations here and across the country. Plus, watch exclusive events and original programming all in one place from your favorite device. Keep up to date with what's happening in your community with news, weather, prep sports, and more. In today's Living Right, here's what you should do to up your workout routine. Search View It in your app store and download for free today.
We talked earlier on in the uh, 4 o'clock newscast during our team weather segment that we are going to start to see a lot more purple on this map, yeah. indicating no travel being advised, and we're already starting to see that in northeastern South Dakota. Yes, and, uh, you know, they're shutting down interstates, right? You know, yes. And so uh, it's no travel advised. In fact, interstates closed, I believe, from uh, at least Watertown. Maybe Brian knows. Is Brookings. Water, br oh, Brookings to uh, North Dakota. Well, you know. I should have just asked oh. you. Oh, <laughs> But, you know, in the Sioux, okay. Sioux Falls no. area here, it says partially covered. But I tell you, when I drove to work here after my dinner break, I bet that's going to change here pretty soon, too, because the roads aren't great in Sioux Falls, even. It's just been kind of that light, kind of more of a nuisance snowfall, and yeah. it's adding up, and with the colder air in place, it's increasing those snowfall ratios. And, and then you see how there was a break to the west, and now that's even filling in, and that's moving in from the south and west. So, uh, it's snowing in Sioux Falls now, and uh, you know, all along Interstate 90 and, you know, other areas, too. I mean, it's going to snow pretty much all night. I mean, it's not going to be exactly heavy, but if you have hours and hours of snow that's adding up and at the weather service now i believe they said they have two inches so far and with the wind increasing throughout the morning tomorrow and all day really tomorrow i mean that's just going to be blowing around easily this isn't going to be a wet and heavy snowfall by any means right and we still could have some power issues here and there just due to the the wind that we're having you know maybe yeah. blowing some power lines it's not like it's going to be collecting on the power lines and trees and things like that but it's just because of the amount of snow some places are expecting further northwest you go really kind of the northwestern part of the state not going to be ultimately yeah. seeing as much snow from this event, but really much of South Dakota, much of the Dakota News Now coverage area, we'll see a lot of snowfall. And there's more on the way too. So for now, this is what we have. The winter weather advisory for the areas in the blue and then surrounding that winter storm warnings. This is in effect until tomorrow morning, but then things change starting around six o'clock or so. Everything changes over to the blizzard warning, uh, at least the you know in the white shaded areas. It still stays a winter storm warning to the west. All the way through the noon hour on Thursday. And you know, the wind on Thursday really won't, you know, come down dramatically until that night. So there will right. still be areas of blowing snow even throughout Thursday afternoon. Even after the snow is gone, I mean, it should be gone uh, from the entire area by about noon, but the falling snow, but the blowing snow will continue. So here's future cast. And again, we're going to keep that snowfall just kind of hanging around all the way through the morning hours. And then the really the biggest, the, the wave, the second wave coming in from the south, enhancing that snowfall during the day tomorrow into tomorrow night. And it just keeps going into early Thursday. Thursday morning, 6 o'clock, just pretty much done around the Sioux Falls area. A few flurries, perhaps. Still some light snow adding up in northeastern South Dakota. But then, you know, we'll keep the clouds around much of the day. They'll clear out that night, and that's going to lead to some dangerous cold. And wind chills, you know, wind chills aren't going to be great either. Even though the wind will be dying down heading to Friday, it's not going to take much of a wind to produce dangerous cold wind chills. So here's the future cast for a wind gust, uh, you know, and they're going to be very strong all the way through the night on into tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, wind gust speeds between 35, 45 miles an hour. Wouldn't be surprised to see some briefly even get up to 50 miles an hour. I don't know about, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of talking about this. Oh, I just wanted to yeah. be done. I wanted to be done. We're all, I think we're all <laughs> over this. There's, there's maybe a, a very select few at this point. But yeah, now that we're you know approaching the end of February, it's like, no. Yeah. We're pretty much over it. But we'll keep the wind gusts rather strong even Thursday morning. But then finally by Thursday night, they do start to die down. Yeah, and so as far as the wind chills go, well, for some reason they're not showing up here. But just take a Just a know they're not going to be yeah. great. Just look at the colors. I mean, that's just that's just bad stuff. Even the computer doesn't want to work. I don't, <laughs> I don't blame it. But let's look at the snowfall forecast. And again, no surprise, we're going to be looking at quite a bit of snowfall. Uh, as you start to go southeast of Sioux Falls, you know, they do taper off pretty quickly right. getting into northwestern Iowa. But, I mean, most of the region seeing a lot of snow. And that's why uh, pretty much everything is going to be shut down tomorrow across the area, maybe even into early Thursday. Yeah, people are, you know, even asking about, will there be school Thursday? It's like, probably not. I mean, at this rate, just yeah. kind of let things kind of clean up a little bit. The wind's still going to be problematic and yeah. uh, that's why we still are talking about this the winter storm severity index and we're in that major impact category uh, really nearly everywhere I mean Sioux Falls were pretty much close enough to that that's been fluctuating a little bit as of late yeah it kind of depends on you know the just the shifting of the storm system path a little bit but just consider yourself having major impacts across most of our area from this storm system well by Friday Sioux Falls will wake up with a morning low of 15 below zero mm. only getting to a high of seven but the weekend looking a lot better we'll see sunshine 20 Saturday near 30 Sunday. Always looking ahead to the weekend, aren't we? Especially now yeah. with the warmer temperatures starting to move in.
22 below zero for you Friday morning in Aberdeen. We'll see sunshine that day. A pretty quiet weekend and kind of a quiet stretch coming up. Only one chance of snow, but that won't be until next Wednesday. Getting really cold in Pier 2, that 22 below Friday morning, and then only 7 above Friday afternoon. Then we'll get better for the weekend into next week we're by a of, lot. I was going to say, we're kind of at that point now, you know, with sunsets at 6 o'clock or later, that we're really kind of turning the page pretty quick. Like, we'll yes. warm up a lot quicker <laughs> across the area. For so sure. We will be back with Sports and Dakota News Now continues right after the break. Catch live local streaming TV free at viewit.com or on the View It app. Stream content from your favorite stations here and across the country. Plus, watch exclusive events and original programming all in one place from your favorite device. Keep up to date with what's happening in your community with news, weather, prep sports, and more. In today's Living Right, here's what you should do to up your workout routine. Search View It in your app store and download for free today. is Dakota News Now Sports. Well, the Northern Wolves wrestlers host the Super Region on Saturday in Aberdeen. That speaks volumes about how far this program has come when it appeared they were gone for good not that long ago. Photojournalist Dave Houck has more on this guy's team. Best decision of my life. You know, I was struggling. When I was being recruited, but I made the right choice going to Northern. You're working, you're good, you're good. This is kind of the vision Rocky had, um, and just seeing it come to life is pretty cool. There you go. It's college wrestling, so everybody's tough. I'm happy with definitely with like the stability of the program and where it's come from, where it was when we first took over. So um, definitely happy with that. Obviously, um, still want to get up there. You know, the top four team in the country. We just haven't got there yet. So. That's obviously the ultimate goal, but there's a lot of teams chasing that. So to be, be where we're at right now compared to where we were at, um, pretty happy with the guys and, and what they've done and overcome. you got to buy in. Either you buy in or you're not going to make it. So everyone that comes in new to the program now, Head down, hips back. they buy into that culture of guys that have started from the foundation probably four or five years ago. Especially when he's standing straight up, you gotta take it real slow. It's built up to what it is today. And we made some jumps, but to get to that next jump, it's a, it's a tough, tough sled. Get your hips up. So it's like, 
you know, I feel like we could get there. It's just, you know, you gotta, at some point you gotta, you gotta push through and, and, and break through those barriers. I think it's an attitude, um, kind of comes from hard work and, you know, kind of having a chip on your shoulder. It's not the most popular sport in the world. There's not a ton of glory in it, so it's just an attitude, I think. Step on that leg. There you go. Head out. It's going to be, you know, winning a couple matches that we're not supposed to win, which happens every year at the regional, sometimes against us, sometimes for us. I think, you know, we're just going to have to need, we're going to need some momentum, win one we're not supposed to, and just keep rolling from there. I think confidence is definitely big, but also it's just, executing what you do best, right? Every guy's got their strengths and weaknesses, and I think you gotta go out there and, and, and maximize your strengths and minimize your weaknesses and do the best you can. Anything can happen, and it'd be pretty awesome to make it up on a podium. All right, the Laverne girls hockey team got a nice send-off this morning as they hopped on the bus for the state tournament tomorrow in St. Paul, where they will play Orono. The Cardinals are led by Miss Hockey finalist Cam Van Batavia, who is second on the all-time goal-scoring list in state history. And it's the fourth straight trip for Cam and her teammates, which is a great way to wrap up her career. We always had that end goal of the state tournament and we're definitely a team that works step by step to build up to these big tournaments so just like that hard work knowing that it all paid off and we're excited to show what we got up at the state tournament. She's uh, led this team to four straight uh, tournament appearances and uh, she, she's a, our energy. When, she, when she's going, we're going and uh, she's got the, the ability to, to be a game changer and, and she's done that throughout her career. And Cam has been leading a very young team that's going to be good for years to come, like they have been. The Cardinals shut out New Ulm 4-0 in the section championship to advance. Again, they play third-seeded Orono tomorrow, that game at 1 o'clock. Best wishes to them. We'll be right back. Keep up with all the current news.
A monthly report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics finds food shopping to be around 11% higher in January compared to figures from the previous year. That's topping business and consumer headlines here tonight. Americans still paying higher prices for groceries, though. A monthly report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics finding prices for food at home to be about 11% higher in January compared to figures from the previous year. All of this comes despite the Fed's effort to bring inflation down with rising interest rates. The high cost of groceries hitting low-income families as food prices are surging higher than salaries are and the Social Security cost of living adjustment. Data from the IRS shows Americans' tax refunds may be smaller this year. The average refund so far is $1,900 compared to last year's average of about $2,200. The expiration of pre-pandemic stimulus programs is the main factor for lower refunds in 2023. Americans are also filing earlier this tax season as $16 billion already refunded, a two-thirds increase from the roughly $9 billion at this time last year. Student loan debt might be a red flag for people trying to find their perfect match. Marriage rates are now at a 50-year low. One financial expert believes money issues such as student loan debt might play a role in that. According to a survey, more than 25% of participants say they think about student loan debt before dating somebody or they think of debt as baggage. Student loan repayment plans are oftentimes income-based and that could lead to higher payments for married couples. As we mentioned, tax season is upon us, and according to a new Nerd Wallet study, 55% of filers are expecting a refund. In this Watching Your Wallet report, consumer investigator Rachel DePompa talks to a personal finance expert about best uses for that tax windfall. More than half of Americans are expecting a tax refund this year. And the average amount of that refund is expected to be around $2,200. Personal finance expert with NerdWallet, Kim Palmer, says that's a significant amount of cash that should have you instantly thinking about the best ways to use it. Given that we're in an environment right now with rising interest rates, it's a great chance to put money into a high-yield savings account to build up short-term savings, and then also to pay off any debt that you have, especially high interest debt, for example, credit card debt. Another big takeaway from NerdWallet's tax survey is that people are confused when it comes to inflation and taxes and how inflation impacts our tax bill. The IRS does constantly make adjustments in reaction to inflation, and so the amount that we pay and that we owe is already, inflation is already baked into those numbers, and so they're constantly changing, and of course we would expect to see even more changes because of inflation in the next tax year as well. So if you are going to file soon, get your paperwork organized, have all of your receipts and proof of income ready, and it's important to note, most Americans can actually file their taxes on their own without the help of a tax professional. That's as long as you have a relatively straightforward situation. If you've moved, changed jobs, had more kids, Palmer says, a tax preparer may be the way to go. With this Watch in Your Wallet, I'm Rachel DePompa. Still ahead on this next half hour on Fox Who Falls, renewed calls in Washington for rail line safety reform following that toxic train derailment in Ohio and all the problems that are coming with it. And it was an important part of her re-election campaign. Today, a legislative committee killed Governor Noe's plan to repeal the state tax on groceries. These stories and more still to come on Dakota News Now at 9 here on Fox Who Falls.
And welcome back to Dakota News Now at 9. We're kicking off another half hour here on Fox Sioux Falls with a recap for you of tonight's top stories. Aberdeen is expecting more than a foot of snow to fall this week. And while city plows will be out around the clock, so will private companies offering snow removal services. Lean Transportation offers construction, demolition, and asphalt paving services in Aberdeen. But when the colder months of the year put a halt to those services, they are offering snow removal and that helps bring in a source of revenue during the winter time. Well, between the heavy snow and strong winds at times, the Department of Public Safety is warning drivers that conditions could become life-threatening, especially if this storm is anything like our last two systems that moved through. Portions of I-90 and I-29 have been shut down. Officials are already urging people to stay home and off the roads as much as possible for the next couple of days. Officials with Hy-Vee speaking out after the company suspended its employee discount yesterday. Officials say that suspension came after employees were allegedly abusing the program. At this time, Hy-Vee is now saying they are planning to revamp that discount with an expected release of mid-April. Tonight, authorities in Spencer, Iowa investigating after they say they found a man dead. According to a press release, Spencer police received a 911 call yesterday right before noon about an unresponsive man. When emergency services arrived, they determined the 29-year-old man was deceased. The scene is still under investigation by Spencer Police and the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. They're working to determine how this man died. Another round of significant snowfall on the way for much of South Dakota, causing dangerous situations for not only drivers, but also those without homes or warm clothing. Bailey Peterson spoke with a nonprofit in Sioux Falls that is now working to keep people safe during this upcoming snowfall. Bailey, good evening. Andrew, with severe winter weather moving in, Union Gospel Mission is providing resources for people to stay warm. This comes after Union Gospel Mission experienced heavy flooding from the last large winter storm. Since then, they have been working to clean and rebuild much of the damage that was done as a result of the flood. Despite the challenges, Union Gospel Mission Communications and Marketing Director Ellie Heckel says the mission is making sure to serve the large need during events like this. That cold snap that caused our flood, you know, obviously we know the extreme temperature brings in people in the community, right? There's a huge need that we see. Um, we see people that need blankets, they need pillows, um, they need something that they can actually lay on. We have individuals that even come in and they know um, if they're not staying at a shelter that we have recycled mats that we make out of plastic bags. They can actually sleep on those as well. For more information on resources provided at Union Gospel Mission, you can go to this story on your Dakota News Now app and follow the links. Brian and Andrea. All right, Bailey, thank you. Turning things over now to a check of the forecast, and there are a few alerts that Phil's keeping his eye on. <laughs> yeah, and uh, pretty much the entire region covered by some sort of weather alert tonight, and then again tomorrow, and even into Thursday around noon. But let's start things off with the ones that are in effect right now. We have a winter weather advisory for all those areas in the blue, and uh, this is through Wednesday morning, and then surrounding that, winter storm warnings to the west, south, and also to the east. And then everything, at least in the blue, transforms transitions over to a blizzard warning that extends eastward into much of Minnesota. This blizzard warning from 6 a.m. tomorrow to about noon, well, in fact, right about noon on Thursday. That's when it's expected to go away. So here's a look at First Alert Live Doppler radar. This is really still just round one of snow that's moving on through, and there's more to the southwest that's making its way up to the uh, north and east, and there'll be more coming uh, during the day Wednesday into Wednesday night. So the wind is going to be a big factor. It's already starting to be most of us in the Dakota News Now coverage area now having sustained winds at or above 20 miles an hour and we're going to stay pretty windy especially in eastern parts of the area during the day tomorrow into tomorrow afternoon the wind 20 30 miles an hour blowing the snow around that's on the ground and the new snow that'll be coming down that continues into uh, Wednesday night and even into Thursday morning it's still at or above 20 miles an hour but it does finally start to subside heading into uh, Thursday night so the wind is going to be a big deal with this, creating those blizzard conditions. Things are looking better for the weekend. We'll have your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Governor Noem announced her support for cutting the state's grocery tax last September on the campaign trail, but her advocacy was not enough to get that bill across the finish line today. The House Appropriations Committee defeating the legislation overwhelmingly by a vote of 8 to 1. Lawmakers voted in favor of passing along a 0.3% cut in the sales tax instead. 
Representative Chris Carr arguing that supporting the sales tax cut was more stable and would be better because it was across the board, whereas Nome and others argued the grocery tax would help those who need it most. It's been inflation on food. It's inflation on all those items I just mentioned, which <coughs> were mostly goods, but don't forget about services and all the services that we utilize uh, in our state as well, like somebody to take care of my vehicle if it breaks down or somebody to come out and fix my heater when it's freezing cold. All those services that are provided. But Noam pointed to a ballot initiative that could be on the ballot in 2024, which could put the grocery tax cut into place. Ultimately, though, that was not enough to sway state lawmakers. And as this legislative session wraps up, the last legislative coffee event in Sioux Falls will be held this weekend. It is hosted by the Greater Sioux Falls Chamber of Commerce and will feature legislators from Districts 2, 13, and 15. The event is set for Saturday morning on Southeast Tech's campus. It will run from 10 to 1145. The meeting is free and open to the public. Meantime, in Minnesota, three pieces of legislation we first told you about yesterday have advanced through the State House. Lawmakers passing measures regarding a ban on conversion therapy, catalytic converter thefts, and creating an office for missing and murdered black women will now be discussed in the State Senate. In a report by Wallet Hub, the average American worker puts in 1,791 hours per year, and in recent years, many people have switched to online work, which can actually end up extending those work hours. Wallet Hub, comparing the 116 largest cities across 11 metrics and top three hardest working cities in the U.S., were San Francisco, Anchorage, and Irving, Texas. Sioux Falls made the list coming in sixth. Well, today, Supreme Court justices heard oral arguments for a case known as Gonzalez versus Google. It zeroes in on whether the tech giant can be sued because of a YouTube algorithm used to promote terrorist videos. The plaintiffs say that YouTube's targeted recommendations violated a U.S. anti-terrorism law by helping to radicalize viewers. While justice, justices think that the argument against Google could have merit, some hint that it seems more like a policy matter for Congress to take up. The Environmental Protection Agency announcing a sweeping enforcement action against Norfolk Southern after one of its trains derailed in Ohio earlier this month. Today, the agency saying Norfolk Southern will conduct and pay for cleanup costs. The order requiring the company to identify and clean contaminated soil and water the Ohio State Attorney General's office has also indicated it plans to take legal action against Norfolk Southern. Today, U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is calling for a series of reforms in the rail industry, this following growing public concern over that Ohio train derailment. Washington News Bureau's Brendan Cullerton spoke with Buttigieg and breaks down that plan. Secretary Buttigieg outlined several initiatives to make the rail industry more safe but some will require cooperation from Congress or even the rail companies themselves. The railroad industry has a track record of fighting safety regulations tooth and nail. That's got to change. They have to change their posture to work with us, not against us, when it comes to raising the bar so that you don't have the kinds of incidents that the people of East Palestine are now dealing with. Buttigieg is calling on rail companies to replace cars meant to contain hazardous materials more frequently and to participate in a system that allows workers to report near accidents without retaliation. He is also asking Congress to increase the maximum fine the DOT can issue rail companies. The DOT itself is working on a rule to require two crew members for most rail operations and a focused inspection program for high hazard trains. Buttigieg says train derailment is a significant problem in the U.S. They have uh, definitely been uh, going down in response to rigorous safety regulations of the past, but still too high. Everyone is one too many. The independent National Transportation Safety Board is tasked with investigating the root cause of the crash. The DOT is investigating whether rail company Norfolk Southern committed any safety violations. In Washington, I'm Brendan Cullerton. Well, case you missed it this morning, Elder Cow was out at uh, Dolly Farms on the east side of Sioux Falls where they have Freebie Saturday taking place uh, this coming weekend. A lot of deals going on at uh, some of the businesses out there. You won't want to miss that yeah. opportunity. And we learned about Sioux Falls food tours happening this weekend. It happens every weekend. And join us tomorrow morning, another edition of Wild Wednesday. And, of course, winter storm moving in. We'll have complete coverage of that as well. All starting at 5 a.m.
Welcome back to Kona News Now at 9 on Fox Sioux Falls. Here are the alerts in case you missed them earlier on in the newscast. A winter weather advisory here in the blue shaded areas tonight through tomorrow morning through about 6 a.m. Winter storm warnings to the west, winter storm warnings to the east. And then things transition starting at 6 a.m. to a blizzard warning because the wind is going to really be cranking up even more than it is now. So we're going to be blowing the snow around that's already on the ground and the new snow that's coming down now and the new snow that will be coming down tomorrow. Now, Minneapolis itself, not in the blizzard warning, but they're still expected to get a lot of snow there. I mean, they're close enough to that blizzard warning. Might as well consider themselves in it anyway. But most of our area, at least east of the Missouri River, is in that blizzard warning. And there's already a good coverage of snow going on right now. And again, this is still round one of snow. The next round is still has to come up from, you know, from the southwest tomorrow. But we've got a nice band of snow right over the Sioux Falls area at the present time. And there's more that's going to be coming in from the west as the night goes on. Meanwhile, in northeastern South Dakota, some areas of snow, uh, you know, some places where it's a, you know, a little more moderate where you see those darker shades of blue. And there's probably some snow coming down in pier right now. Sometimes the radar has a hard time picking it up from, uh, you know, because the radar beams kind of overshoot a little bit. But still, uh, there's snow coming toward the pier area too and uh, more on the way. So temperatures have been falling throughout the day into the evening. We're in the single digits and even as far south as Brookings now 7. 13 in Sioux Falls. We're at 25 in Yankton. Earlier on today, Rapid City was at 50 degrees and they've dropped to 6 right now as that cold air continues to drop southward. And pretty much all of us now have below zero wind chills. We will not get back above zero for wind chills for um, at least probably till Friday, maybe even into Saturday before things improve as far as those wind chills go. So here's the wind right now, already about 15 to 25 miles an hour. And as we head through the night on into tomorrow morning, we're still talking 15 to 20 miles an hour central northeastern South Dakota, but up to around 30 miles an hour in southeastern parts of the area. That continues through about noon tomorrow. And even to the west where the wind's not going to be as strong, I mean, with the light, fluffy nature of the snow that we have, it's not going to take a lot of wind to blow that snow around. But where we do have the really strong winds, it's really going to be flying around, reducing that visibility. Here's Wednesday at 10. Let's take you into Thursday morning. Uh, the snow will be moving away, but still pretty breezy, so we'll have some blowing snow issues. And here's Thursday afternoon. Finally, Thursday evening, the wind starts to uh, die down. And uh, here's future cast now tonight. We still have that snow continuing in uh, a large part of the area, especially to the south. We'll continue to have more snow making its way up from the south. Heavy snow during the day tomorrow. Very cold as well. More snow Wednesday night and then Thursday morning. Things finally moving away, but still pretty windy behind that. And here's a look at temperatures Thursday afternoon. Single digits below and above zero. As far as the snowfall forecast is concerned, we're still talking about a pretty good chunk of our area having 12 inches or more. All this latest model one has kind of cut that down a little bit, but still significant snow across the entire area all the way through Thursday uh, morning. Especially here's a quick look at that 10 day forecast for you now. I think I got it here for you. Well, let's see. It's not actually working. But anyway, things are looking better for the weekend as temperatures will warm up into the 20s and 30s, Brian. All right, Phil. Thank you so much. A Wall Street Journal report says Twitter's pending lawsuits total $14 million plus interest. There's a lot to talk about that's trending tonight, and we begin with this. Twitter is facing those lawsuits over unpaid bills. Three lawsuits involve the company's San Francisco headquarters, which alleges Twitter failed to make almost $6.8 million in rent payments. CEO Elon Musk has implemented a more strict spending plan for the company, which he said was initially losing $4 million a day. If you're in a bad mood about the winter storm, this hopefully helps. <laughs> National Pancake Day is next Tuesday. Participating IHOPs will offer a free short stack of its buttermilk pancakes from 7 in the morning until 7 in the evening. And International Bank of Pancakes loyalty members can get two times the pan coins on any additional <laughs> menu items purchased. I have no idea what I just said or what it means. <laughs> we can tell you, though, for certain that IHOP has celebrated National Pancake Day for 17 years now. Well, the musician Ed Sheeran, he is dipping into the food biz, teaming up with Kraft Heinz on a hot sauce called Tingly Ted's. It's, in <laughs> it's inspired by his childhood nickname Ted and comes in two flavors, Tingly and Extra Tingly. It mm -hmm. features lemon notes and a smoky flavor, red jalapenos, chili, and a mix of herbs and spices. Tingly Ted's is available for pre-order at tinglyteds.com. The shipments will start on the 1st of March. Hey, Andrea, I didn't yeah. catch the product's name. What is it? 
<laughs> Tingle your tads. Thank we'll you so much. Be right back. Well, for some reason, I couldn't get the 10-day to show up during my weathercast, so here it is. I mean, snow and wind tomorrow. There's blizzard warnings for most of our area for tomorrow. And then lingering uh, snow and blowing snow on Thursday, then things do get better for the weekend. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Late night laughs next on Fox Sioux Falls, beginning with Last Man Standing. Dakota News Now does continue in two minutes over on KSFY and KDLT. From all of us to all of you, have a very good night. See you.